Hey ho, I hope you're having a good day. I'm out here bright and early this morning before the sun comes up to gather horses because we're gonna go out here and in this pasture with this big reservoir in it and, and gather some cows. If you've watched my TikTok here for a while, you'll know that there's about, oh, I don't remember what it is, 12 or 15 cows that were pretty wild and they kept jumping fences and uh, always in the wrong place. So we didn't get them branded during branding time, so we're gonna brand them today but they're out here in this pasture with the yearlings. So we got to gather all that stuff and sort them out. And I'm also going to pull those bulls that are stuck in with the yearlings. So that's what we're doing today. I've got to gather the horses right now is what I'm out, out here doing, finding them. And then uh, gather this stuff. My wife and I are going to go get them in. And then we've got a bunch of other stuff to do during the day. And then we'll brand those cans uh, this evening. So here we go. Well, I'm going to be riding Spud today, and I'm going to be riding this double G saddle on him. And the reason I'm going to change up saddles is I've been trying different saddle and, and pad combinations. He's always had these spots here. These have actually gotten smaller since I got him. But now I'm starting to get a spot here, and same on the other side. And uh, tried a couple different pads on my other two saddles, so now it's time to try out this one and see if I can keep from getting these dry spots back here and and still keep from getting them very big up here so we'll see how this one goes thought I'd take this opportunity to kind of show off this head stall I made several years ago this is all kangaroo lace but I think spud looks pretty good in it that's a Richard Brooks bit I made the reins this is a mohair get down rope this my wife is helping me today this is the horse that she's gonna use we call him slick uh, he's about 10 years old I think I've only ever ridden him once my wife says he's pretty smooth and pretty cowy uh, he doesn't really like men I think the people that had him before the, the guy that rode him I think he nitpicked at him quite a bit you know, he had to make the right move every time, all the time. And then I think uh, his daughters or wife or something rode him too and was a lot better to him. So that's something you might keep in mind is your horse doesn't have to be perfect all the time. You don't have too high of expectations of them. Because uh, you can. I've seen a lot of horses ruined that way. Really nice horses get ruined from somebody nitpicking at just every little thing. And, you know, then we come along and take this horse and... and He's been a really nice horse for us, so just be mindful of that, I guess. Well, off we go. So here we are. There's uh, mostly yearlings, and uh, I don't know what there is, 12, 15 pairs in here that we're gonna gather. Get it over that way. My wife's getting it over that way to get that bunch and I'm headed over this way to get uh, this bunch started and then we're headed directly this way towards me and then we'll get him in the corrals and uh, hopefully it all goes slick. On a side note you'll notice I got Birdie with me and, and Sally's back there. Rosie has a hurt foot. She had some sort of cyst in between her toes and I drained it. Uh, she would probably come with but it probably just uh, hurt her foot worse, so she stayed at home. And Rosie's a uh, pretty nice one to have with. So these cows are kind of touchy. You can't come loping in here and go to hooping and holler. And we just walked in here and they're already, you know, loping off. But they're going in the general right direction. Those two milk cows that I put in here are in the lead, so hopefully they'll take them right to the corrals. That'd be a nice little trick to pull on them, but. Uh, going the right way so far the dogs are working really good my wife back there bringing them up now they need to make a right hand turn some yearlings got in the lead my wife's headed up there to turn them 
And since it's yearlings, they'll probably make the right-hand turn, come clear back across this way, and I'll have to turn them. And they just basically need to head over the hill towards that cottonwood tree. All right, so now they're headed in the right direction. The annoying part about this pasture is the gate's just right over this hill. So then when the lead goes over the hill and you're still back here with these, you're not sure if they're going through the gate or not. So I've got to stay up here and make sure they go through this gate. But they're headed the right way so far. Not an ideal way to put in a fence line or gate, but I wasn't in charge then when they did that. So then we just got to go up to the curls there after we get through this gate. So they're starting to veer to the left of the gate, and I thought I was going to have to go back here and tell my wife she needs to go up on the other side, but she's so handy she could just tell that when I started riding back this way, she needed to swing over to the other side there. So that's nice. That's the milk cow. Going to brand her calf today too. And they saw the gate. We're going through it now. Worked out just right. This little lot with the power poles they're going to is just a little lot, so we just kind of push them up this hill and into the corrals and we got them whooped. Well, they managed to find the gate even though it's kind of surrounded by a bunch of, I think that's called sump weed. There they go. After a while, we'll sort these yearlings off and then sort the bulls out and we'll brand the calves. Ready, good. So I took that double G saddle off a spud to see if there was any dry spots and, and uh, it didn't quite sweat him up enough to tell. So I don't know, I'll have to try it again and, and uh, to be continued, I guess, on that. So now we just gotta wait a while till the help shows up this evening and brand this little bunch of calves.